welcome back to my channel. I have extensions in, because just in case anyone hasn't seen them yet, they're kind of fun. But I have super thick hair, and so I have to put in a lot so I don't look crazy. So my hair is like super, not super thick on top, and then small, and small, thin, thin on the bottom. Um, so they're really heavy. Anyways, that's that. Um, I wanted to do a story time video today and talk about me and Jake's first, second, third kiss story. It's one of, one of my favorite. Um, so a little backstory. Uh, Jake and I met in Texas and when we, when we met, Jake was down in Texas to pay, uh, to sell pest control door to door. And I was home for the summer from college. Uh, my dad's an Air Force Colonel. And so we were stationed, that's where they were stationed, was in Texas. So I finished high school there and then I went to college and I was home for the summer. So, um, met Jake and, um, went on our first date or whatever and, um, a couple thereafter and I can go, um, I'll do those stories later. But, um, suffice to say, I had, um, had been dating someone previously that um, ended up cheating on me and I broke up with him but yet it was still kind of a toxic relationship because we were still friends good friends um, and I had broken up with him but yet he still had say on whether I could date or not um, and anyways, um, so this guy, George, um, I had broken up with. Anyway, so me and Jake, I think this is around our third date. Yes. Because he also went around and took a poll from all his female friends on what date it was appropriate to kiss on and they all landed on that the third date was like waited long enough i think everyone has bones sorry they're super loud um anyway so he landed on that third was the appropriate date to kiss on i went over to his apartment after he had been done selling for the day and we what did we do that day we um, went to Walmart and like bought the things to make a cake and we made a cake together and that was a fun date that he came up with on his own. And then we played Liar's Dice and I lost terribly and I think um, after I've been losing pretty badly, which I'm pretty sure they were cheating, but he said, okay, the next one, if you lose, then you've got to kiss me on the cheek. Okay, sure. You know, so uh, I lose, of course. <laughs> and I kiss him on the cheek, and that's that. And we like play a little bit longer, and then it's time for me to go. And so he walks me out to my car, and Mr. Rico Suave, he says, um, I want to try something, or I've been wanting to try something, something along those lines. I'd like to try something. Leans in for the kiss. So we're kissing, um, not too terribly long, you know, like a minute or so, um, you know, and it, and it's good, um, good kiss or my husband. Anyways, and, um, and so I enjoyed the kiss, um, for being Little Miss Molly Mormon, I probably, which Molly Mormon is an LDS term, basically meaning that, um, super innocent, naive, not really have done anything like rebellious in your life. So never smoked, never did drugs, uh, never partied. Um, Jake was the fifth boy I had kissed and every other boy I had kissed besides one, which 
I'll have to tell that story sometime. Um, I dated them. Like, I was their girlfriend when we started kissing. I didn't uh, kiss before. So it was a little bit of a shock, but I still, like, enjoyed it. Um, but when Jake started pulling away, I thought of George, and I thought how he would judge me and freak out, and just this negative, possessive relationship that we had going on, and, um, because he had already, he had cheated on me, and we weren't dating, but yet, that's what went through my mind, and so I made a face, apparently, and Jake liked to describe it like, um, it looked like he had stole my candy bar. <laughs> it's funny. Um, so... I made this face, didn't realize I made this face, you know, said goodnight, got in my car, and started driving the 20 to 30 minutes um, ride home. Jake was living in Converse, Texas, and I live like the outskirts of San Antonio, so not like downtown San Antonio, Texas, but the outskirts. Um, actually pretty close to, there's an LDS temple. In, in San Antonio, I was really close to that temple, um, Canyon Springs area. So, anyway, so I started driving home, and two to five minutes into the drive, I get a call from Jake. So I pick up, we start talking, and he starts apologizing for kissing me, which I didn't expect. Um, I was super intimidated um, to be dating him, first of all, because everyone that I had dated... My first boyfriend was like four months younger than me and I in a younger grade and then my um, second boyfriend um, was a whole year younger than me Jake was six years older than me so it was super intimidating which is funny because um, yeah Jake's hilarious um, really easy to get along with, everyone loved, you know, he just is such a people person. But I was intimidated because I had never dated a man before. So, you know, um, I'm sure a lot of it went into my face, even though I enjoyed the kiss just because I was like, ah, you know, I can't believe this is happening, like freaking out a little bit. But he was apologizing, which I felt bad for. Um, I told him it was fine, you know, like it was good and, you know, like nothing to apologize for. But then I guess, like, my nerves, and I had talked to, and, and I had talked to George, and he kind of laid into me, just like I thought, called me a slut, are we even dating? No. Had we been dating for a while? No. Who cheated on who? You! Anyway, so, um, it was bad, and I, um, it kind of took down my confidence, and so I ended up writing a list, because that's what I do best. I love to write lists. Anyways, I wrote a list, um, or like my little script of what to say, and I called Jake while he was at Walmart, and basically told him that I wasn't ready for that yet. I wasn't ready to be, like, dating or kissing. <laughs> and he just said that... He was standing in line at Walmart, and this just goes to show, like, how immature and, um, how little I had dealt, like, dated or dealt with boys at this point, because Jake's like, okay, so this girl is calling to break up with me, and we're not, <laughs> we're not even dating, so he was like, uh, whatever, whatever with this chick, I'm done with her, like, she is crazy, you know, he gets home to his roommates, and he's just like, Oh my gosh, she's, she's crazy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I um, broke up with Jake before we even started dating. He thought I was nuts. But somehow, so my, um, one of my best friends liked his roommate. And that's how we got on our first date initially is because she wanted to date his roommate. And she talked me into doubling. And so that's how I agreed to this all to begin with, because again, I'm intimidated by dating this older guy, right? And um, so she is still, you know, at this point, 
really into the other guy. I think at this point they ha had been kissing already. And so she's like, okay, we got to go on another date. Like, we can do, you know, friends or whatever. And so we, um, we go on another date. We go to the Riverwalk, which is in San Antonio downtown. It's fantastic. They have such a fun nightlife. So we um, go to the river walk, which is like you, you go like here's street level and you, you walk down and there is like a self-made canal, that's the word, um, running kind of underneath with like shops on the side and it's, it's super cute. They um, film part of, oh my gosh, Miss Congeniality there. Um, at like this little arena. So we're like walking um, down there and it was such a fun day. Um, I think at this point I finally had gotten the balls to just um, tell George off and was like, you know what, we're not dating. Or maybe I just stopped talking to him, which was like a big move for me because um, yeah, I was totally sucked into that even though he had already cheated. And um, but I think being with someone that was very respectful of me and sweet to me and just, I don't know, there was just like a whole other par of how he treated me versus George and we weren't even dating yet and I I think seeing that um, gave me the courage. Which my first boyfriend was like that too and I don't know what happened in between. Um, when we had broken up I had lost a, a lot of confidence and kind of went down the spiral and then I started dating George and I think that that might have been part of it is um, I just took that breakup really hard I was young um, anyway so I at the end of the date I was like I'm I'm gonna kiss him you know like I like this guy he's so nice this is such a fun date you know like I wanna I wanna continue having dates with him you know, and especially because we had sat and at this point we had started talking on the phone, um, which is hilarious because Jake had thought I was crazy, but yeah, he still gave me the time of day. I think I talked to him after George had given me an earful about how I was a slut and how I couldn't do this, and I sat on the phone with him and started crying, you know, at 4 o'clock in the morning. So, so Jake was super, um, just a great guy. And so I was starting to fall for him, and so I, I um, yeah, I went for it. <laughs> so um, we are getting into the cars. Um, my best friend and her guy, they had already said, like, goodnight, and they had gotten into the car and it was just me and Jake talking in the parking lot because we had parked our cars like we had met like downtown San Antonio and then we were driving you know Converse San Antonio uh, like outskirts so we're standing outside the cars talking Jake's six foot I'm five four so I'm like I'm gonna go for it you know like he went for it the first time I totally screwed it up I really like this guy I'm going to go for it. So I go for it, and he's so tall, like, I couldn't compensate on how, like, far, <laughs> how far I needed to go to, like, reach him. And so I went with, like, such a force that our teeth, oh my gosh, I'm such an embarrassment, our teeth clicked, and, but then it was fine, like, you know, like, a little kiss, not, like, t shorter than our first kiss, for sure. Because I think I totally caught him off guard and our teeth clicked. And I was just like feeling like an idiot. But anyways, and then I pull away and Jake's like, I thought we weren't supposed to do that anymore. Cricket, cricket. <whistles> feeling super awkward. And then he gives me the homie high five. So if you don't know what the homie high five is, you know, like, grab each other's hand, pull each other, like, chest bump with your bro, with your homie. That's what he did. So I am mortified. I get into the car. I'm like, oh my gosh, we just have to drive. Like, I 
can't believe I did that. I can't believe I had the guts to do that. And then plus, I did it terribly. Um, so I feel like an idiot. And then I guess, same thing with Jake. He gets into the car, and his roommate's like, did you really just give her the homie high five? Did you really just do that? And Jake's like, oh my gosh. Just drive. Like, I can't talk about this. Just drive. So he's super embarrassed, too, because... He's, he likes me, of course, and he's embarrassed, one, that he was like, we're not supposed to be doing this, are we? Like, he was like, God, why did I, why did I say that? And two, he gave me a homie high five. <laughs> so, anyways, um, we finally figured it out, though, by our third kiss. I think we were watching, like, Twilight or something ridiculous. I don't know how we got the guys talked into that at their apartment and movie make out, you know, um, we figured it out. Jake also had to teach me, re-teach me how to kiss, and that's a funny story, but I'll save it for another time. Um, but anyways, yeah, it, it, I hope you enjoyed my story, and it's fun to tell it. I love to talk about Jake and, um, remember fun times, but I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>